Today we're going to be talking about how to evaluate iterated integrals. And in this particular problem, we've been given the iterated integral, which is the integral from 1 to 4 of the integral from 1 to 2 of this function x over y plus y over x dy dx. Now, this is an iterated integral because we've been given limits of integration for both x and y on separate integrals. So what this tells us is that because dy here is inside of dx, we work from the inside out, and this tells us that we're going to be integrating first with respect to y. Because dy is on the inside, that means the inner integral here has limits of integration with respect to y. So that means that we're going to be plugging in limits of integration 1 to 2 for y. And then we work our way to the outside. We integrate second with respect to x, and we evaluate x on these outer limits of integration here. Now keep in mind that with iterated integrals, you can see them as dy dx or the opposite order of integration dx dy. And in the opposite order, then you know that you have the opposite order of limits of integration. If dx is on the inside, then the inner limits of integration relate to x. And if dy is on the outside, then those outer limits of integration are with respect to y. Keep in mind also that iterated integrals are just really a method for evaluating double integrals. Sometimes you'll see double integrals written like this, maybe where you have the two integrals here, the double integrals and some region D, and then your function here, xy plus y over x, and then dA or something like this. This is a double integral, and the only difference is that this iterated integral tells us specifically already that we're integrating first with respect to y, then with respect to x, that we're doing them one at a time, and we've been provided separate limits of integration. With a double integral like this, you need to figure out whether you're integrating first with respect to x or y, and set your own limits of integration. But again, remember, iterated integrals is just really a specific method for evaluating double integrals, and the most common method for evaluating double integrals. So back to our problem here, again this tells us that we're integrating first with respect to y because dy is on the inside. That means that at first here we're going to be treating y as our variable and x as a constant. So we can rewrite this function here, we'll say 1 to 4 and 1 to 2, and we'll rewrite it to give a clearer picture of what our function looks like. So we'll say 1 over y times x, and then we'll say plus 1 over x times y. So I've just split up the function to kind of show numerators and denominators separately. So because we're integrating first with respect to y, let's deal with this first term here. We have 1 over y and we have x. Well, since we're treating x as a constant, you can think about this x here as a constant. It's like any number, like 2 or 3, right? So it's just a coefficient on this 1 over y term here. We know that 1 over y is going to be natural log of y because the integral normally of 1 over x is natural log of x, so it's no different here that we have the y variable. So we're going to have natural log of y with this x coefficient on it. So we'll have the integral from 1 to 4, and then we'll say x times the natural log of y. Then for the second term here with respect to y, again, x is a constant, so this 1 over x value is just a constant coefficient on this y variable here. Well, to integrate, remember, we'll just use power rule. We'll change the first degree y term to a second degree y term by adding 1 to the exponent, so this y to the first becomes y to the second. So we'll have y to the second here, but then we have to divide by our new exponent. So instead of having just 1 plus x out here in front, we'll We'll have plus 1 over 2x times y squared. And we're going to be evaluating this on the interval 1 to 2. The important thing to remember about this, notice that this is kind of confusing because we have x variables and y variables in here. But because we just integrated with respect to y, we had dy here on the inside, and therefore these inner limits of integration relate to y, it's important to remember that we're going to be plugging in 1 and 2 here for y, not for x. So sometimes I like to write y equals 1 and y equals 2 here, so I remember what I'm plugging in for, and I don't accidentally plug in for x. So we have 1 to 4, and then now to evaluate on the interval here, we'll plug in our upper limit of integration 2, and then subtract whatever we get when we plug in 1. So we'll get x times natural log of 2 plus 1 over 2x 
times four because we get two squared. So we get four, let's just go ahead and make that four. Then we'll subtract whatever we get when we plug in one. Well, natural log of one is just zero. So that term's gonna go away and disappear and become zero. When we plug it in to this term here, we get one squared is just one, obviously. So we get one over two x. Now when we simplify this, notice we can combine four over two x minus one over two x. So our integral here before we evaluate it with respect to x is gonna be x times natural log of two plus three over two x dx because we have four minus one over two x, three over two x. So now when we integrate with respect to x this time, we'll do it term by term again, and this x times natural log of two, natural log of two is just a coefficient really on this x variable here. This is a first degree x term. We'll change it into a second degree x term by adding one to the exponent. So x to the first becomes x to the second. So we'll get x squared here but then we have to divide by our new exponent, so we get natural log of two over two times x squared. Then when we integrate this second term here, remember that this is just really three halves times one over x. So three halves is our coefficient. The integral of one over x we know is natural log of x, so we'll get plus three halves natural log of x, and we'll be evaluating that on the interval one to four. So if we plug in our upper limit of integration first, four, we'll get natural log of two over two times four squared, which is gonna be times 16, plus three halves times natural log of four, so natural log of four. Then we'll subtract whatever we get when we plug in one. Well here, if we plug in one to our first term, we'll get natural log of two over two, just times one squared or times one, so natural log of two over two and then plus three halves natural log of one. Well, natural log of one is zero, so we don't need to add that in, it's just going to disappear. And this is what we're left with. Notice here we have natural log of two over two times 16 minus natural log of two over two times one. That's just gonna give us 15 times natural log of two over two. Now because we have a natural log of two here and a natural log of four here, we can simplify by changing this natural log of four, we'll get three halves here, to natural log of two squared, right? That's no different, two squared is still just four, so we haven't changed it. But then laws of logarithms tells us that if we have something inside here, two squared, and we have this exponent, we can take the exponent outside of the natural log and bring it out in front as a multiple, so we can get rid of it here and multiply this by two. Well, when we do that, we have got two in our numerator and two in our denominator. We'll get them to cancel. And what we're left with here is just 15 natural log of two over two plus three natural log of two. Now we can find a common denominator. We can multiply our second term here by two over two. We'll get 15 natural log of two over two plus six natural log of two over two when we multiply by two over two. And now that we have a common denominator, we can combine. So 15 natural log of two plus six natural log of two is 21 natural log of two all over two. And that's it, that's our final answer. This is the value we get for the area when we evaluate the iterated integral. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.